this is the 2022 paper. That is the multiple choice part section. If you want to jump to the question that you want, there's timestamps. Uh, so you can just jump to the timestamp and go straight to the question that you're interested in. First question, identify the type of reaction that occurs when undergoing polymerization to form polyurethane. First of all, that one is clearly addition, but you just always double check. So I'm going to be crossing out every single one. Uh, that doesn't match. So nothing's been eliminated, nothing's been substituted, and no molecule comes out. They just simply break off and rejoin. Um, and so just had to go find, uh, get a 2B pencil and find the sheet, uh, and then a circle in 1A. So I'm going to be doing that for each question. Uh, and if you just look to the right hand side, you can see or above me, um, you can see A is correct. All right. Uh, so question two, structural isomers are compounds with the same molecular form, but a different what? Um, I hate it that they use the word, the different types of terms, so structural isomers. Um, you'll see in this one, it doesn't really matter that they use the word structural. They weren't testing for the word structural uh, because molar mass and molecular mass must be the same in every single isomer there is, including empirical formulas. Um, and so that was just a, um, a safety one, really. Um, so they didn't really ask for functional groups or anything that was that would make you have to think twice about all the different terms. Thank God for that. All right, um, that's one of the ones I would have put on my cheat sheet and memorized. And I didn't actually memorize my cheat sheet, by the way, guys. Um, so we'll see how we go. Um, so here we go. Uh, redox reactions, oxidizing agents, oxidized. I'm not going to waste my time now. I'm just going to go straight away and do all the oxidation numbers. Um, saves me having to think later and uh, just double check so I get everything correct. Uh, and so I write oxidize. The trick with oxidizing is it's the, the reducing agent is oxidized and, ox and, and um, reduced is oxidizing agent. Um, so here... Uh, I'm just commentating, so I just did this test without commentating, otherwise it would have taken me a long, long time. So I'm just doing it um, slowly with all the working in there, how I'd expect you to do in the test. Um, and hopefully there will be enough time by the end of this paper one when I've done the second section for checking as well. Um, and so I'm not quite sure how long this one goes for. I think it goes for like half an hour. It still gives me a long time to finish. Uh, still gives me an hour just for the last couple of questions. Now this one I got tricked even though I knew it was coming uh, and said it was oxidizing agent but then I realized hang on uh, the copper is and the copper 2 plus are in different places so don't get caught out on that one. All right um, so just moving along question four which pair of reagents would react to form a glycosidic bond that's two sugars. You jump straight away and you can see it's B but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to carefully check each one. That's amino acids. I could check my data because I was unsure. Um, they're fun two di completely different functional groups. Um, it's probably an S to C. Um, and God knows what that other one is. Um, nothing close. Um, so they didn't even misspell it or anything. There was no real tricks in that one. Um, so moving on to question five. Uh, so this one here... Uh, if they're going to put questions like this in the test, well, they may as well just have multiple choice tests and make it easy for everyone and don't have short answer sections and paper two. Um, so percentage um, yield. So you get 10 grams. So you've got to work out the theoretical and they've given you two bits of moles there. So you've got to do limiting your agent. So without thinking, I've just gone straight away to do limiting your agent and realize, oh, hang on. Well, they've saved me one step. Um, that helps. All right, thanks. That does help. Uh, there's still a hell of a lot to do though. Um, so this, this, some of these questions you can see are really quick and then there's about three or four that are super, super long and this is one of them. Um, okay, so limit, I've got to work out which one's limiting. I'll do the proper working out so I don't stuff it up. Um, so point two, uh, so take uh, P4. So point two is to X. Um, therefore, we can cross multiply. Um, and so that gives me one mole of O2. And because I've jumped steps, I haven't been thinking through it very clearly. And I, um, but only have 0 0.2 moles. Um, so I've only got 0.2 moles of the O2 and I need one. Um, then O2 must be the limiting. Um, 
so I just leave that only have in there and O2 is limiting. All right, so I know that's the one I'm to work with. I can forget about the P4. Thank God I didn't use O2 to compare. Uh, then I have to do another calculation. Um, and so moving up here, um, so this is really disappointing because um, what happens if I screwed it up here? I still should have got a mark for at least working out which one's limiting, but I didn't. Um, so as I said, again, they, they're really, if they're gonna do it this way, Let's just save us all a lot of time and money and just make a 50, 50 mark multiple choice as our 50% external. Um, and uh, like the Singaporeans do it for their biology test, entrance exam, it's 100% um, multiple choice because um, the, the correlation is, is completely there. You don't need to do essays even. Um, so I've done, the, I've done a research subject on assessment. You can just do it all this way. Um, the students still have to do all the work, as you can see. Had to go run off and find a calculator that I haven't used for about 10 years. Had to find batteries for it, so I did have a pause in between here, and I am getting distracted left, right, and center. Um, so there's no sound on this, thank God. Um, but I still got it done anyway, all right? Um, the only time break I took then was to go find batteries for that calculator. Um, and then you'll see later on, I didn't know how to use the calculator. Um, I'll leave that in maybe. Um, is that, when's that for? That was for the, to the power, I think. Okay, so I had to do the molar mass. That was a bit cruel as well. They should have given you the molar mass. All right, that's, enough, that's worth another mark probably. I uh, hope I didn't screw that up. Wouldn't get any error carried forward. Got to remember this is only worth one mark, guys. Um, I still do all the proper working. Uh, my calculator is there at the moment. It's just simple calculations. So 11.36. Um, I'm also crossing out because they're doing distractors now. So um, a lot of these little semi steps will be answers. Um, and so you can confidently cross them out. You can see, oh, that's exactly what they're trying to do. So with these really hard ones, I am uh, can't really see it over there. I just need to I'll adjust that so you can see it. So you can see that they've, um, no, they didn't put any distractor, sorry, 0.88. I'll just leave that as it is. I thought it was covered up. Um, and so I can't really see where the distractors come from for that one, but I can later on. All right. Um, so moving on to the next one. So this one here, uh, the equilibrium concentration, this is quite an unusual one. Um, which often represents a ratio of molecules in the gas mixture when the temperature is decreased. Temperature is decreased. So I need to know where the, I need to interpret that a lot more. Um, so if it's greater than zero, it's positive. So that means it's endo, not exo. So I can put energy on the other side. Um, and then um, what's it asking for? Uh, what's the new equilibrium? So I decrease the temperature. That is going to um, cause a push to the left-hand side. The Shatler's principle. So A, B is going to go down. A is going to increase. Now, what do I have already? This one's quite unusual. Eight molecules to two. So A goes up, B goes down. Because the current ratio to 10 to the minus 4, 1 minus 4 is 2 to 1. Um, so I'll write that down. I don't think they needed that done exactly. Um, it's just a general ratio thing going on. Um, so that's approximately, um, I'll write it down as an initial two to one. Uh, and so going up, A going up and B going down does make, um, does make sense. All right, so that's a four is to one. Uh, so, um, sort of okay uh, five is to five is never going to happen because they're equal so there's no chance of that three is to seven means a's gone down b's gone up and then they do it again so i'm not really happy with a but b c and d are, are really wrong um if it's two is to one um well i guess that's four is to two and that's gone down um yeah i don't I'm not really happy with the a answer but it's the others are just so wrong that I'll leave it. They could have made this way harder and made, I don't know if that A is actually correct, but it is definitely the most correct, easy. Uh, I should have written a really nice question. It could have been a nasty question where they could have written another one that was more correctly us working to A increases, but too bad. Okay, question seven. Um, this one's a little bit too easy. 
um, because you should know these reactions super well. All right, so alcohol plus a carboxylic acid is ester, and you could just leave it at that. Just do a double check. Um, yeah, that's how you get an amide. There's no way it could be any of those. Um, so that, that one's just a, a write-off because you've memorized your reactions. Um, so that's not even a hard one. That one's a super easy reaction one. I made double easy because it was a confirming reaction. Okay. Um, computer just blanked out. All right. I hope my cell phone doesn't blank out on me too. All right. Um, so here we go. Uh, what are we doing here? Predict the system shown that will respond with a small amount of... So you're adding sodium hydroxide. That one's a nice, tricky one. Okay. Because there's too much going on in this one. Okay. So there's going to be a salt... Um, so there's going to be um, complete dissociation. OH is going to take up. He's definitely going to react with the H plus in terms of water. Um, so there's going to be some neutralization there. It's going to decrease one side and then increase the other. Um, so there's going to be more water and less hydrogen. Um, so I need to draw that in. Um, trying to work out. So that's the first reaction that's definitely going to go on. There's too many reactions. Uh, what H two O is going up? That's going to do another one. Uh, so there's a double, a double push to the right hand side. Now, um, so there's I can cross out all the lefts. All right. The problem is it's way too much going on here. Um, there is will the pH decrease? The H plus has been neutralized. You've added base, so of course it's going to, it's never going to go less than, you know, it's going to push above seven more, that's going to push less than seven. Um, so I've pushed to the right, I've taken B and D as possible, so I could cross out A and C completely, because it can't be pushed to the left. Um, there's salts created now, and there's all sorts of other things going on, that's because it's a weak acid, weak base, I'm going to ignore those, the effect of those. Um, but that's going to influence the pH as well. So it's a, a weak acid and it's salt. So there is a buffer there. But even if there is a buffer, there are, there are still um, minor changes. Um, so it's not going to do a lot and it'll slightly increase. Um, so it remains the same is a bit dodgy. Uh, yes, because it's a buffer, but it's not always 100%. The pH definitely can't decrease. Um, it's definitely going to increase, um, but so I've got two options. It's definitely going to the right and I've got increase and I've got remains the same, um, which is really nasty. So I'm going to have to assume there's a buffer there um, and that's a trick. So it does increase a little bit. Um, that's a very nasty question. Um, hang on, what I do? C, it can't be C has to be either B or D, um, and remains the same is the best question. And that is probably the hardest one there because B is slightly right. Um, so if you look to the right question, eight, the answer is actually D. I did go with D, um, definitely the hardest one, definitely. Again, and not a, not, a, not a perfect question, some issues with that as well. A lot of interpretation, um, definitely picking the best answer. All right, moving on to question nine, uh, back to easier ones, thank goodness for that. Uh, I guess they're trying to trick people up and not being able to find the true stem because they've gone for ethanes and butanes. You know, that gives clues anyway. All right, so you've just got the chloros and the fluoros, which ones comes first? You go alphabetical, so C before F. Um, they could have got a lot nastier with this one. All right, they gave the stems aren't too tricky. Um, so chloros first, so I don't even have to really name it to chloro and, and you're done. All right, the fluor is going to come second. So we just go with A um, and just check, just make sure we mark that off and check it. And it is 9A. Okay. So moving on to the next one, 10. Uh, this one's got a little bit of a tricky one in here. It's a weak acid indicator, so it's always always write out the equation, especially for ones like this, where it's really going to be quizzing you on getting the right pieces together. Um, so H and I are, are going to be equal, uh, and these uh, these two sides are going to be equal too when there's the most um, most obviously seen indicator change. 
Um, so you can get rid of C and D quite easily because they're not really a part of it. So because it's a, uh, the Ka and Kbs don't have water in them. Um, and so it's an acid, so there's H+. Plus. Um, so for A, it is equal when it's um, at, the, at the point of change, but it's always equal, whether it's because of the equilibrium of the system. But it has to be B because that's the point where both sides, both colors are equal, and that's where the, the eyes can detect the easiest change when there's a two pH change from that point on. Uh, so that's nice, A is a nice trick. Uh, but the B is definitely the answer. All right, um, so what's that question 10B? So just marking that off with the 2B pencil again. Okay, um, question 12, 11 and 12 are the same question. Now this one uh, is a lot of work. They have left certain things out. Um, the convention, they've gone for the other direction. All right, so that was probably the trick involved in this one. Um, determine the uh, species that travels through the salt bridge towards the re reaction half cell in the electrochemical cell under standard conditions. So um, I'm just going to speed this one up a little because I don't know why it's taking so long. Oh, because I was trying to find a data booklet. All right, so I ran off to find a data booklet. All right, so let's go to the data booklet then. Um, so I just, I marked off the data booklet here. Um, so I guess the data booklets have to be chucked. I don't know if they say you can't write in them or anything. Um, so write, find them, mark them out, write out the full equations. Don't um, take any risks, okay? So take it, um, some of, this is another one of those slow ones, okay? Some of them are quick and easy, even though I'm taking my time to read every single answer and crossing out that I know it's wrong. It's hard, uh, the only time you really can't do that is the calculation questions, but you can kind of still cross them out if you can see where they've tried to put the distractor stems, usually by going halfway through um, equations and then putting that as answers, trying to trick students into thinking they've found the answer and not realizing they've got to do another three or four steps. And I'm not kidding. Yes, another three or four steps for a multiple choice question. Um, so I'm just doing all the full working for this. It does pay off, even if it's not asked, it's double it's double checking for answers. So it is worth doing that. That one wasn't any a part of it, but everything else is a part of double checking for answers. Um, so that's the total voltage. I can see they're the correct equations. Now, at this point, I don't think I've even read the question yet. Um, I think I've started to read the question now. Um, so determine the species that will move through the bridge towards, so I still need to do more work. All right, um, I don't know exactly where everything's moving. Um, so I worked out electrons going towards the left. I put arrows in, so this two plus is going to copper and the zinc is going to zinc two plus. Um, that must mean the C, the two pluses are disappearing, so positive ions must be going down the left-hand side. Um, and I'll just keep writing in as many details as I need. It's not going to give me enough to answer both questions yet, so I'm just going to keep going. Um, so I'm just double checking about labeling. Uh, so reduction there, is that correct? Zinc reduction. Um, zinc here, um, what am I up to here? I'm just trying adding more details in, negatives. Um, that reduction's probably written wrong. Um, so what am I up to here? Um, I think in my head I'm still thinking through making sure all the bits and pieces are correct. Uh, and so zinc uh, at the top is gaining electrons, but we're at the bottom. So zinc is going to zinc plus two electrons, which is losing electrons, which is oxidation. So hopefully I've worked that out by now. It's the bottom equation. Yes. Okay. Thank God for that. It would have made sense anyway, because I'm just filling all the in all the gaps and labeling everything. So I catch up any errors as I go. Um, so there's oxidation on the right hand side, reduction on the left hand side. Um, and then, uh, so reduction's going on there. Um, oh, the question's asking for the reduction half. So it must be asking for the left hand side. So it can't be nitrates, that's a good distractor. Um, so potassium ions are going down the left hand side. Okay, now there's nitrate in the that's going to replace. Um, zinc, sorry, zinc that's going to replace the potassium going out. So zinc ions eventually might start leaking through. It would take a long time, um, but it is a little bit, all right? 
Uh, and the copper ions, well, the, the nitrate that come down the right-hand side will get replaced by the nitrates in the left-hand side. So there's no issue there. There's never going to be copper ions going anywhere for that. Um, so the best answer is definitely D. Um, the second best answer would actually be A. Um, so that's tricky. Could They could have made it way trickier. They could have said after a long, long time uh, what extra ions might come in. Something like that. That would be super nasty. Um, so 11D. All right, that was not too bad. But again, the amount of work and analysis you have to do, and we're not done yet. So um, now the zinc electrode, um, what else have we got in the question there? We're looking for charges now. So we still haven't done enough work on those. Um, and so I just think, I don't memorize this. I think of this naturally. So um, there's gaining electrons and losing electrons. Um, so you can see where the electrons go. Um, and there's also labeling cathode and anode. Um, so reductions always at the cathode is what I ask my students to learn. Um, and if that's the case, um, the electrons are going to one side, they're naturally being attracted to there uh, and they're being released from the zinc electrode side. So the zinc is actually turning into uh, zinc two plus plus electrons and that's repelling. So we'll go negative for there because there's electrons there and they're also repelling to the other side. So it must be positive on the left hand side, negative on the right hand side. Um, so that gives us A is wrong because um, because uh, I can't even read that one there because of that first bit. All right, sorry, to I'll zoom in on that uh, so you can read the question. Um, and so I'm just trying to double check the positives and negatives charge are correct. I think I'm getting confused here because I've written two equations there and then they've swapped around as well. Um, so that took me a little bit of time to suss that one out, that the positives, be confident that the positive and negs, I've written them on the right side. Um, since I managed to stuff up the naming of it too. So just be very, very careful. It's good to write everything I've written in there because they all double check each other uh, and they should make sense. Um, so that one is a good double check of everything. So I'll just um, move that along a little bit. Um, okay, undergoes reactants, has a negative, no. Um, negative charge, yes. And um, those two mark off according to how I've labeled it. Uh, and so it must be D. All right. Um, so in the end, um, wasn't too, the negative and positive wasn't critical. Um, and so um, that was nice. They could have made it much trickier and the stem much trickier. So mark that off, question 12, D. Okay, question 13. So um, the Ka of a weak acid. Uh, so this one is a calculation question. Uh, so those uh, distractors will probably be part of the calculation. Um, so pH of three, uh, that one's covered up there. So uh, I might just, uh, you'll see that coming up a little bit later. Um, so those two are equal. So just do the expression. Uh, remember for K's and KB's we don't need to do the water part of it. So I'll just jump straight to and write H squared because HA and H, H and HA are the same. Uh, so then you need to just substitute those things in. So I'm just putting uh, the equation to work out uh, the hydrogen ion concentrations of the pH. So the pH is uh, 3.2 uh, and this is where I take forever because I don't use um, a calculator, I just use the um, computer. So um, just working out the functions and how to get that out. So I'm just going to fast forward through that. It took a minute or two or three to work out how to work that one out. Um, and so it's uh, 6.3 by 10 to the minus 4. Now I've worked it out. You can see it on the screen there. Um, so now I know how to use my calculator. I haven't used it for like 10 years. All right. So um, as you can see, so I've subbed that in. Uh, so that was a distractor. Um, the 4.0 by 10 to the minus 7 uh, is the second distractor from that second calculation to try and get students to quit. 
Um, don't know where the 5.2 one is. That's probably, I don't know what that is. Can't be bothered working that one out. Uh, 3.3, 10 to the minus six. Uh, if I had time, maybe going back to that one and working out why they got that one as a distractor would be good. Uh, so that's probably my biggest risk of getting something wrong because there's one thing in there I didn't confirm was definitely wrong. Uh, maybe I should put a star next to that one and go back to that one. All right. Um, really doesn't help me having the mark scheme over to the right hand side. I know it's correct. Um, so yeah, that one doesn't count. I need to go back to that one, spend a couple more minutes trying to work out how they got that other distractor before I'm absolutely confident that has to be correct. Okay, so next question, mass spectrum for compound X. Uh, so I've got four compounds there. Make sure you write them out uh, so you can definitely see uh, what the mass spectrum should read. So it should read over there. I can see if I count that along. Um, it goes up to 73, so just one, two, uh, sorry, one, two, so 72. All right, so I'm just uh, writing out uh, the four of them and hopefully only one of them adds up to 72. That's wishful thinking. There'll be at least two of them that add up to 72 and have to use the mass spectra to work out which one is the more likely one. All right, um, so butanol. Uh, this is probably going to get a lot of people because they're not going to be able to write out all four of these compounds. Um, and so if I add them up, there's... Um, four 12s, four carbon, so it's 12, and one oxygen, 16, and then there's two, four, six, eight, eight hydrogens. Uh, so that one adds up nicely to 72. I'm just using my calculator because I don't trust myself. Uh, so butanol is in the running. All right, uh, so butanol, uh, so there we go. We have uh, two, four, six, eight, 10. We've got 10 hydrogens this time. So there's definitely two more hydrogens for this one. Uh, and so that'll put us out, uh, that'll put us to 74, and there's no line for that. Um, uh, do I add that up in the calculator or do myself? All right, 74. All right, I should really put a big big X through them right now because um, I'm going to get confused if there's too much writing all over the place. Uh, butanone, make sure you do all the hydrogens in there, make sure each carbon's got four bonds, um, and that one adds up to 72 as well. So um, I've got two there. So just butanoic acid, hopefully is not going to be in the running, so there's less to worry about. Uh, so butanoic acid with two, four, six, eight, um, eight, uh, nine, is that right? Two, four, six, it's covered up now. Uh, but there's two oxygens there, um, so it can't possibly be, um, it's gonna go way over, because you've got another 16 thrown on there, so even if I've counted up the hydrogens wrong, which I have, right, it's only eight, but it doesn't matter, I just sort of jump to the oxygens and. That was done. All right, so <clears throat> I need to look at these two. I need to look at butanol and butanone. Uh, and so you just cut them in um, different places, uh, commonly cut where there's um, different bonding going on. Uh, it'll be a different size and shape and weak and so forth. Um, and so that one adds up to, uh, there's three carbons plus two, four, six, seven. So there's um, 24 plus uh, uh, 30, sorry, 36 plus 2, 4, 6, 7 is 43. And there's one. There's a massive one at 43. Uh, this one here, uh, because I didn't cross it out, um, I wasn't looking carefully. And I've started to analyze butanoic acid. Uh, and then I've sort of realized um, that that's the wrong thing. Um, and I've ticked it off as butanone. And then that one doesn't make sense. Um, and then I've sort of wigged out and realized I'm working out the wrong thing. I'm thinking, hang on, where did all these oxygens come from? 72, that doesn't add up to 72. Yes, cross it out. Yes, you're looking at the wrong thing. Okay, so looking at this one here, um, unfortunately, this one also gives us a 43 uh, and a, uh, sorry, 43 and a 29. Um, and so for some reason, I think I'm wigging out, I just assumed butanone is correct. Um, and so if you just have a look over here, I don't know what I was thinking at the time now, but I'll just put this one up over here. I do have to do some further analysis um, according to this picture over here. Um, and I do break up butanone a little bit more and there are 50, a 15 and a 57 fragment. Uh, which matches the above graph, which Butan Al doesn't do. Um, so I'm not quite sure uh, what I did there. 
Um, I can't remember what I was thinking, but I think this picture over here is much clearer. So uh, I'm going to put that one down as a fluke. Uh, and I didn't process it properly, but still got it correct. All right, so moving on. All right, so there's a couple of issues there. Um, we'll see how much time we get when we finish the second bit. All right, question 15, the structure of amino acids is shown. Um, the molecule contains an amine group and a carboxylic acid group. Well, you, should, you should have that memorized by now, so that now we've gone back to super easy again. So uh, what are the distractors? Well, they're certainly, they're just trying to break up the ketone and the hydroxyl group. Um, the carboxyl group into hydroxyl and uh, ketone group. God knows where the methyl group is. Um, so that one's just a walk in the park, that one. All right, quite different to the previous question. So there are three or four of these uh, very nasty ones. Uh, so 15A. All right, uh, I think it gets easier from here on. Um, oxidation states, I always write the totals underneath. A total minus eight, so total plus eight, no, no further division from subscripts, so that one's easy. I'm not even gonna bother with that one. I'm sorry. Um, that one, they're just getting too straightforward now. Um, identify the redox reaction. This one's a little bit annoying because you've got to do the um, oxidation numbers and make sure they don't change from the left and the right. Um, so plus two, minus two, using the oxidation rules that you should know, um, and then doing them on the other side, uh, and it's still, everything's the same. So that one's a little bit annoying in that uh, there's a lot of oxidation numbers to work out. Um, so I just got to be lazy and jump to the obvious one. So anything by itself is zero, and then when it combines with something else, it's not going to be zero. So that's a dead giveaway that it's got to be C. Um, just to double check, there's no little confusing uh, distractors, and I might have made a mistake, which is highly unlikely for that sort of question. Uh, so just analyzing the OHs. Uh, so hydroxides OH minus. So those oxidation numbers stay the same as well. Um, so that can't be it. And then getting super lazy, it's a double displacement down. Uh, so that'll do us. All right, 17C. All right, technically a walk in the park, but I was just checking the, dist the distractors, um, which you really need to do. All right, uh, what do we do now? Nine, uh, 18, that uh, looks like a horrible equilibrium one, but they're just looking for the expression. Uh, so that's nice and easy. Weak base, uh, so the weak base never has the water in it. Uh, so just, um, so that should be easy. Products over reactants, products, and uh, cross the water out because um, it's a weak base and reactants, there we go. Check the destructors, can't have water. Um, those things are all in the wrong places. Um, easy, all right, 18C. All right, just two more to go. Um, oh, and we've got a semi-nasty one. This could be potentially be really nasty, but it's not too bad. Um, so they have half cells there, but we don't know whether they're oxidized or reduced. Um, it looks like they're all consistent. Um, so is it really Q to 2 plus and R plus to R? So I just write those out just for clarity um, and just to make sure I don't accidentally overlook anything. So just writing out the formula. So um, I'll just do the half cells. So Q uh, will go to Q 2 plus plus 2 electrons. Um, and then that makes sense. So the R plus plus electrons must go to R. So I just write those out. I don't think it's necessary to write them all out. Just writing one out just to make sure everything looks right and is clearer with the electrons there. So you can see that there's electrons on both sides. Um, so labeling them oxidized and reduced and then labeling them oxidizing agent, reducing agent, just so you don't get tricked by uh, the mix up of terms. All right. Uh, and then just um, making sure that you've read the question correctly and you're doing the one that the question has asked for. All right, so if it's oxidized, um, I'm not quite sure what I'm thinking right now. Oh, yep, sorry, I'm just writing in the oxidizing and reducing agents, circle the question, reducing agents, so I'm looking for the ones that do this the best. All right, so that's my focus, so I don't screw anything up and mix everything around. That's probably where everyone's going to get lost, all right? Um, and so from that there, you can clearly see that Q is uh, reducing the R and the S. So Q must be the strongest reducing agent. Um, so I, I would write those down as well, just to be sure, um, just because you, you've got a couple to work out and rearrange. So just doing that there, Q reduces R and S. 
This is one of those ones that it's worth probably three or four marks, um, but you're only getting one. All right, uh, and so, but T reduces Q, so T must be even stronger than Q. Uh, and so if we look at that, um, that gives us A. So they could have written a much better distractor and given us TQRS and TQSR, but they have it. So I can easily write off um, B, C, and D because T is definitely in front, then it's definitely Q. Um, and then it's RS and behind, and B, C, and D are very wrong. So just for comparing S and R, so Q reduces R a lot better. So um, R is the weakest. Um, so put R at the very end. Uh, so it's a, it is SR, just to double check, sort of a double check. All right, there we go. So 19A. All right, moving on now to question 20, last one. Uh, that one's a nice easy one. Um, two forms of polypropene. So I just write out uh, propene just to double check uh, that I haven't uh, missed any tricks or anything. So always do your work in and write out um, what it looks like. So, and I, after I've done that, so propene looks like this. All right, and so polypropene will be that double bond breaking and the little CH3 hanging out. So I can do little cuts there so I can see where all the units are. Um, just looking for any tricks, doesn't seem to be anything there. All right, so that one's going up, down, up, uh, down, up, down, up. Uh, so that must be evenly on both sides, so it's syntactic. All right, and this one here, it's not all on one side, so it, it can't be isotactic, uh, but it is, uh, it's not syntactic, so it's got to be um, atactic, it's got to be random. All right, so just checking uh, these things there, so atactic is for two. And so it's just between A and B, which has to be sin. All right, so it must be 20A. So we've done with that. Uh, so just mark off that on the mark sheet. And we're done with the multiple choice.